Hey, scrappy crafty people. Hey, it's West Coast Scrapper RN or Kelly. Um, as you can tell by my voice, I'm still a little bit sick. I've been sick for a while and I just got my voice back to where it's like somewhat <laughs> understandable. Um, so I haven't been around for a while. Um, I haven't stopped crafting. Um, just the past week or two, I've had a sick kid and then I got sick. That's how it always happens, right? So I haven't been doing much in the past few weeks, but you know, shopping online and adding to my, I need a bigger box syndrome. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video and let you see um, my last project that I completed. It's been done for a while. I actually had this in the box, packed up, ready to go. This is for a coworker. Um, a friend of mine at work that I've worked with for many years and um, many years ago, probably a couple at least, um, they took a picture of her little guy. He's much bigger than this now, but I fell in love with the picture when she showed it to me and begged her and begged her to send me the picture. And I said, you have to send me that picture. You have to give that picture to me. I have something so cute I want to do for you. Finally, I... I said to her one day at work, I said, are you ever going to send me that picture? She's like, oh my gosh, I'll do it today. And she did. And so I, I got a hold of the picture. I just thought he was so cute in his little Pepsi thing. This uh, picture was taken at um, a farm store, kind of, well, it's kind of a country, it's, it's called McClay Country Store. And it is, it's a little country store out in the middle of, you know, Podunk. And... It was taken on their front porch with a little wagon that somebody had made from a Pepsi, <laughs> from a Pepsi crate. And this is the, these are the front doors to the general store. So they took this picture in front of the general store. And in the original picture, you can see all the stuff. And I, I just wanted to focus in on him because he was so adorable. And, um, so I finally got the picture and I, and I made a, a canvas for her. Now, as I see the canvas and as you're seeing it, I don't know if it's my lighting or whatever, it looks quite pink in my in my viewfinder. This is barn red. This is barn red. Um, and everything on the canvas, his little shirt is a red plaid. Um, but this is not coming out as dark as I see it in real life. So I apologize for that. You know, crappy lighting. And I think the camera just tweaks it a little bit. So I'm just going to get into this. This is a 9 by 12 canvas. <clears throat> and I had some trouble with it because this is a pre-gessoed canvas. And I chose to use all my new Tim Holtz sprays. I have every single one of the sprays that has ever been released. I bought them all because <laughs> I loved them. And I'm going to see if memory serves me right because there are so many different sprays on here. Um... So what I first did is I don't I don't think I'm going to use the pre-gessoed canvases anymore. The gesso that they use is either that or I'll put my own gesso over the top of it because um as you probably well some people know the the sprays that you use are for permeable and uh material like paper and and whatever and whatever coating they used on this canvas didn't allow the sprays to penetrate and dry very well. And even after having a fan put on some of these sprays, especially the heavy spots like I did here, um, even after a couple days, I could put my finger on it and I'd come up with ink on my finger with spray color. So I had a little bit of an issue with that. So be aware, they are only for porous surfaces. And this canvas is not very porous let me tell you it's not it doesn't work like a piece of paper with gesso over it for some reason this pre gessoed canvas is not very porous everything kind of stayed and held up on top of the surface but I made it work and I'll tell you how so first what I did is I had my blank canvas and I went in with a couple of stencils these um if you can see right in here right through here this is the the bark or tree, I call it my tree stencil. It's the bark stencil um, from Tim Holtz. And then I used the, this is also a Tim Holtz stencil, something I think it's like crocodile or lizard skin kind of thing. Um, and I did some on the sides over here. 
some of the tree bark and some of the you know texture here and a little more tree bark on here and some of the texture the crocodile type texture um, up there so I started out with that and I just used for that I used what did I use hmm I think if I'm not mistaken, I used my 3D transparent matte gel. Either that or molding paste. It took the color, but not very well. I think I used the matte gel. I kind of wanted it. My original idea was to have it kind of a resist, but it, it held the color. So I went with it. Um, then I just started playing. Literally, I just started spraying. If it had... As you can see, this palette, well, I'm hoping you can see, this palette is oranges and beiges and reds and creams and blue because I wanted to pull out the blue jean. So I did put some smattering of blues in here. There's yellows and dark reds and oranges and some browns. I just kind of went with the, I kind of drew off of here because there's the brown colors and the wheels and it's kind of a reddish you know mahogany tint and then we have the bright reds here and the blue and his blue jeans and so and there's some white in his little t-shirt so I just kind of pulled um, all the hues from this photograph I wanted it to look um, rustic not necessarily old or vintage although it does have kind of a vintage feel I wanted it to be more country Country chic, right? That's what we're going to call it, y'all. <laughs> so I started spraying and I started with some of the colors that I used. And there are many colors I used. There were so many colors on here. I just kind of wanted them to, to create. If I got it too dark in one color, I'd come in with another color. There's brick red, which is some of these up here. There is um, sponge sugar. There is Vintage Photo, there is Rusty Hinge, there is, oh my goodness, I if it had a red, brown, or orangish tint, it's probably on here. I used so many. Um, there's some ripened berries, I think that's what it's called. Something like that. What's that one called? I'm not going to pull all my sprays out, it takes me forever. But anyway... Um, when I started, all these flowers were white. I always start with white flowers. I tend to color my own flowers. Um, I, I have a lot more white just because I can, I can, you know, customize the colors. Um, these were all done with Tim Holtz sprays. Um, some of them I completely saturated, like these down here. The big ones are completely saturated. This is with Rusty Hinge. And then I came in with a paintbrush on this and I tipped it with Red Barn. And this one was done with Red Barn and, oh, I think there's some rusty hinge in this one. It's just kind of a reverse. I did the lighter one here with the darker edges, and I did the darker one here with some light, um, just to lighten it up. Um, all these are done with Tim Holtz sprays. I just sprayed them and then I took my paintbrush and I tipped them. Uh, like this, these little flowers right here were cream. And these are done, come on, focus, there you go. These are done with Vintage Photo. And then when I got everything done, um, this these were all white. So, you know, if there was a color I wanted, I just hit it. This is also done with Vintage Photo. It was a white rose. And I just hit the tips with some Vintage Photo. And some, I think there's some tea dye in here. I took um, some papers. There's four different paper lines here. <laughs> I just went through all my paper lines. And these are very thin papers. They're not the thick, nice, you know, papers. They're, they're from some of my cheaper, you know, I call them the flimsier papers. I have their papers. They're not a heavy card stock type. And I just went through and I pulled out anything that had red in it. The, the barn red that I was looking for with uh, the tan backgrounds. I just ripped them into strips, kind of did a collage behind there. And then what I did is I took Wink of Stella. And the, the Wink of Stella that I used on this was a Glimmer Brown. And that's it right there. See that? How pretty that is? 
a little shimmer with some brown and I just edged it I used it also actually I think that's what I used on this foot on that um, on that flower and I just went around the edges just to create some definition um, I had edged all the edges of this paper and distressed all the edges of this paper um, and I had edged them with vintage photo but I went ahead and just kind of I just took the brush and I did it left-handed because I'm not a left-handed person and I didn't want them to have a, a nice sharp line you know and so I did it left-handed so it wouldn't be perfect and I just kind of outlined every one of these papers just to give it some visual texture um, because they're all very flat I did them very flat I popped this photo up after I printed this photo I actually put this in my Photoshop and I darkened it a little bit he was very washed out in the photograph and he's a little redhead boy and so he's very pale um, but I darkened it in this this lighting is not gonna let me do it but I darkened it just a little bit it brought out the color in his cheeks he's just such a doll. He's such a little dolly. And um, I printed it out and then I took my Ingvid Balm distressor. And I don't see a lot of people using. Hope I don't get into a coffee fit, y'all. Hold on. <clears throat> I don't see a lot of people using this end of it. But this is what I used. I used the wire. I used the wire end of it and I just went along the edge and I just scraped some of the photo off just to edge it. You can still see the color through there so it's obviously scraped. Popped it up on some popped um, some 3D you know some 3D uh, pop dots big square ones and and that's this part of it. So these little words all came from the Tim Holtz ideology called uh, chit chat it was the chit chat and these were white and some of them were the brown but like this one was brown and I just had some ink left over on my on my little you know handheld inky thing and I just went over them and just made them all the same kind of brownish color these little plastic things <laughs> this little let me see if I can find them. I've had them in here forever and a day. Here they are. Those are recollections. They're adhesive rhinestones. I took one from each and I hit those with alcohol ink and they just turned out gorgeous. And I think the alcohol ink I used on that was rust. Those turned out good. So this is basically mostly done with Tim Holtz. These are I Am Rose's flowers. I have some metal. I put a little metal doorknob looking thing because he's right in front of a door. I thought that was cute because I kind of cropped the doorknob out. But, you know, it's kind of an antique looking doorknob. That came from Saw Crafter. These metal corners came from Saw Crafter. I also hit those with some alcohol ink. This is a... It's, it's escaping me right now. <laughs> dusty Attic. This is a Dusty Attic... And this thing gave me trouble, and that's why it looks the way it does. If you can't tell, and you probably can't, it is dark, dark, dark blue. You can see right here. It's this. It's the dark blue, like, in the shadows of his jeans. But I had issues with it because when I started out, I started out with rusty paper. It didn't give me the texture that I wanted, so I mixed what did I use texture paste sand I used the finnabar 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 where are you I used the black texture sand the texture paste in black sand and I put sand texture on here which was white and black and then I hit it with the dark blue Tim Holtz spray the darkest one I could find I don't recall the name of it because actually I've used a few <laughs> few different um, a few different colors of blue on this to try to get the right color so after that I thought hmm so then I took red I took my red um, ink which was which one did I use I think I used barn door and I just dabbed the stamp pad over the top of that sand to give it a little bit of red on there so you can see a little bit of red and then I hit it with a Wink of Stella to make it shiny. I used the clear Wink of Stella. 
and it came out okay it's a little darker and not it doesn't come up as blue as I wanted it to but you know what after the problems I had with this thing I that's just the way it's gonna be <laughs> so going back to when I just had this as a blank canvas with all of the sprays that wouldn't dry for days and days what I did was I dried it as much as I could with the heat then I put it a fan in front of I put my little fan on it for like a day I just left it all all night <clears throat> excuse me and then I came back and I dabbed the parts that were still you know showing up on my fingers with a paper towel and then as I could I got it as dry as I could get it and then I took it outside and I sprayed it I just went ahead and sealed it with some matte sealant to, to lock in those to lock in those ink colors so that they wouldn't bleed I didn't want to leave a mark on her wall or you know have her handle it and go oh there's I have ink all over, you know, all over me so that's what I did and I came back and I started adding, you know, flowers and such. And I found this little red wagon um, in the miniature section at Hobby Lobby. And I just filled it with some antique buttons that I had, some metal antique buttons. This was a white button. It was a vintage button I got from um, probably a bag of buttons my mother gave me because she had so many from when she was young. Hit it with some alcohol ink. I just filled the wagon up with little flowers and buttons. I added some flower buttons here and here. And some little berries. I added some little berries in here just for some touches and, you know, a little button here. And then I went crazy, cray cray, with my, <laughs> you know I love this stuff. I swear I, I need to buy it by a gallon. My glass bead glitter gel. I adore this stuff. I love it. I put that on a lot of stuff, okay? Then I thought, hmm. I am going to go back and I'm going to really, I don't want to get the, I didn't want to have the 3D effect of using the, the glass. I, I did it pretty, pretty finely over stuff because this stuff will add texture and it does have kind of a greenish tint. The sparkle comes out kind of a green, that iridescent color. And I thought, hmm, I don't like the way that looked on this particular project. I love the way it looked on my the box that I made. This particular project, I want it to be more subtle. So I sprayed over <laughs> and colored over because I only did like on these, I think. And then I went back and I came in with my multi-matte medium or multi-medium matte and I painted all the flowers on the edges and I just poured Judikin's glass beads. These are just free glass. They're just, you know, the micro beads, the clear micro beads. And I just saturated everything that had glue on it now has, even the button, you can see this button here. Let me get the light to hit it right. There, see? It is completely covered with glass beads. There's glass beads on every flower in the wagon. I wanted it to pick up little shimmers of light, but I didn't want it to have extra color. Um, I wanted it to be completely translucent so that the colors of the flowers stayed there. I didn't want it to have a gold undertone. I didn't want it to have the green undertone of the glass glitter gel. So I went with clear glass beads and I just frosted like a frosty fall morning is what this is kind of reflective of. And that's how I did that. I think that's about it. I had a blast doing it. It took me longer than I expected because I just had so much trouble with um, with those with those sprays not drying. So be forewarned. If you're using if you're using a canvas, make sure it's a, a, a raw canvas and not <laughs> not one that's pre gessoed because it's not very porous um, and it just didn't work as well as I had hoped. It worked great where I had used the, you know, where I had used the texturing, um, but everywhere else it just sat up on the surface. It didn't, it didn't absorb into the surface. Um, but I got it done and I think it looks lovely and I told her it was done and that I was going to make a video so I could give it to her. And um, come to find out, I had no idea 
I said, I sure hope it goes with your decor, <clears throat> pardon me, in your house because it's very fall colors. And she said, oh my gosh, that's perfect. My whole living room is fall colors. She says, I have oranges and reds and deep breasts. And I went, oh my gosh, fantastic. It'll work perfect. So anyway, that's my little canvas. And I hope you like it. It was super fun to make. And it was, it was a long time in the making because I couldn't get her to get that photo to me. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to her this week when I go back to work. And that's, that's it. That is it. And I am happy with it. And it came out, it came out really pretty. It's much, it's much deeper and much more bold and vivid in real life. Um, I'm hoping maybe I can give an idea if I turn one of my lights away. Maybe I'll turn this light and see if I can um, if I can get a better, a little bit better. Not much. This is still much darker than the camera showing. I'll give you a little close-ups of this. I'm just going to take this through. I love this stencil. I really do, and I love that bark stencil too. So this is my canvas. I think he's adorable. He's still adorable even though he's like three and a half now. <laughs> I'll be doing another one for her, I'm sure, because she's due again. I believe she's due in April <laughs> with her second baby. So so there is a look at my canvas. I hope you like it. Please comment and subscribe and leave me comments. I love to hear your comments. Um, you know, if you have any suggestions, if anybody knows what the deal is with those pre gessoed canvases, I'd like to know because I don't think I'm going to be using them again. I think I'm just going to stick with the raw canvases and, and see where I can go from there. I don't really, I, I wasn't really digging the whole pre gesso thing. It just didn't work for me really. I didn't like the way that it wouldn't accept the sprays readily. But anyway, let me just tip it up so you can see how it's it's pretty 3D with that wagon on there. It sticks up about, oh, the tallest flower, probably inch and a half. So it's pretty dimensional. It's a pretty dimensional canvas. That wagon is super cute. I held that wagon on there with E6000. I put the E6000 under each wheel. Just a little dab under each wheel and the handle. <laughs> so that's how I did that because I'm thinking, how am I going to put this wagon on here? All right, you guys, that's my little canvas. Thanks for watching. Stay calm and scrap on.